Hello and welcome to the August 1st, 2022 Bitcoin Cash Network discussion. Today also happens to be a BCH day, and as such, today's discussion will be Bitcoin Cash, a year in review. Uh, today I am joined by Emergent Reasons, Imaginary Username, and Dijon. Um, so it's been a crazy year. Um, there's been a, a lot of really amazing developments, uh, a few setbacks, um, and uh, we will talk uh, about as many of them as uh, we have time for. Um, if anybody has any uh, question, uh, questions or uh, would like to comment, uh, feel free to request to be a speaker. Um, and if uh, we have time to get to you, uh, we will. Uh, please keep in mind, um, Twitter Spaces is still a little bit buggy, um, and so um, Sometimes when people request to, to be speaker, um, we do not see it. Um, so if for whatever reason uh, you are not accepted, uh, please don't feel too sad. Um, I've been told that um, it sometimes makes a difference if you follow uh, the host um, on Twitter so that they see you uh, in the sort of top list there. Um, but I cannot confirm or, demi uh, confirm or deny that that is true. Um, that being said, uh, imagine a username, emergent reasons, um, and Dijon, welcome. Um, Dijon, I've given, I've invited you to speak, but I don't see that you've accepted it. Yeah, did you invite uh, Dijon's uh, personal account or the Go Crypto account? I think he's on here. I did both, actually. Oh, okay. So. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully one of those will, will get working. If, um, if you are new to Twitter Spaces and you're wondering why you can't request um, to become a speaker, uh, it is mobile only, so you have to be uh, using your phone uh, or a uh, mobile device anyway uh, to request to be a speaker. Um, and if you are using your computer, you will not be able to request uh, the ability to speak. Um, with that out of the way, um, hello, welcome everyone. Um, happy anniversary, happy BCH day, happy birthday, happy fork day, happy Independence Day. Uh, what, what do we want to call it? Independence Day, and uh, that's my favorite. Uh, Imaginary, do you have a, a preference? Well, I... I used to call it uh, Exodus Day, but it might be a bit too religious. So yeah, I'll go with Independence Day. <laughs> uh, and, and I, for, I, for anybody who's listening who doesn't know uh, why we might prefer Independence Day, it's just a matter of semantics, a matter of uh, details that uh, uh, Bitcoin Cash blockchain goes all the way back to the Genesis block in 2009. Uh, so the, the chain is, is, is there, but uh, the, the specific Independence Day issue is is the point that uh, BCH set off to maintain the uh, you know the idea of uh, Bitcoin being cash, being money that everybody in the world can use, and uh, not only available through uh, some kind of channels, and not only available to people who can afford uh, artificially high fees and things like that. Yeah. So uh, to many, if uh, we talk about birthday, then there is a dispute, like, and many would claim that it goes all the way back to 2009, January 3rd. So, um, yeah, Independence Day is less controversial. Uh, I'm a big fan of BCH Day, because um, that can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, it doesn't come with any baggage, so BCH Day. Uh, the Green Day, a... Greening. Oh, good, welcome. Uh, yes. Do you have a preference? Uh, what would you say today? Is would you say it's BCH's birthday, anniversary, Independence Day, Fork Day? I'll just say it's anniversary, but I think it's a great day for for BCH. I mean, it's a uh, you know in these times it's difficult to survive, and having a currency that is actually alive now for so many years, I think that's already a success. And I'm seeing you know progress, and I'm actually happy about it that we have ups and downs because this means we go forward. So I'm, I'm uh, very optimistic, uh, like always. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can discuss things today, what happened last year or years, and uh, we can also, uh, you know, step into the dirty things, whatever I can talk about. Uh, but I, I generally think uh, the usability of, of BCH around the world is, is increasing because it's working. Because you can really pay with, with a currency and it, it's getting accepted almost everywhere. And people have financial freedom, like an alternative method, uh, and they can control the money. And I think in this, in this economical situation that we're right now, we're, we're actually needing this. We're in need of that. And I'm not talking about people from Europe uh, or maybe from not even from the USA, even if the inflation rate is getting higher. But I'm talking about the third world countries that are actually hooked with the, 
high inflation rates of their local currencies and they don't know how to go into anything else and they cannot even use the the cryptocurrencies for their daily spend so i i think it's the idea is still there in matter of the the vision that was that was here from the beginning um and uh, i'm look downs will always happen and problems will always occur with more people coming onto the network but uh on the other on the other side uh if the focus is there there's just only one thing that is guaranteed and that's uh that success. I, I, I hope so. I, I, I think we're on a good on a good path. Yeah, it's a good point. The uh as uh some currencies die, right? I mean just fiat currencies they historically Hello? eventually die. So uh having <laughs> having the uh Bitcoin cash survive, thrive, keep growing Anyone? uh is very nice. Could you guys hear me? <clears throat> Yes, I can hear you. All right. It seems like Dijon might not be able to hear me. I'm not sure. And now so... I hear you. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. I thought I was talking to myself for a little bit there. You scared me. Um, I was co-hosting a, a space last night with Fiendish, and uh, we got reports from several people in, in certain time zones that uh, uh, the the space just completely dropped out. Uh, but... For for people here in Asia, it, it uh, had no problems whatsoever. So I think yeah, you know, Twitter Space might be doing uh, something. Um, uh, it works and it doesn't work, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, but it's okay. Did you hear me? What I said? Or... Yes. Okay, perfect. I think it's the best way that we just open a discussion and we just try to, you know, talk a little bit about what's going on and what is the future of BCH and how you guys see it and how we see it on the usability side. Um, maybe somebody can just set up the questions and, and we go through that. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I actually have a, a whole list of things that have happened in the last year uh, for review. Um, so um, I guess I guess <laughs> might as well jump into the fire. So, of course, uh, this last year uh, brought us uh, probably the biggest up and the biggest down uh, combined together in, in uh, Smart PCH. Uh, Obviously, uh, when Smart BCH launched, uh, it was incredibly exciting uh, and lit a fire in, under the community, and people were really excited. Um, and currently, we are in the midst of uh, an incredible, unfortunate event. Um, I'm not sure if anyone would like to comment on <laughs> the current situation, uh, but uh, might as well get it out of the way. I think it's difficult to comment. I think it's difficult to comment on, some, on such a thing because we don't know the details. But even if we don't comment on that, I think that uh, I think that that will sooner or later just clear uh, as it is. I mean, and we should just you know overtake that obstacle and try to move forward. Um, I don't know. I look at it in that kind of way, but I know there is a huge amount of funds being locked over there. Um, I don't know. What do you think, guys? I mean, uh, we, we've seen. Uh, other crypto with uh, massively worse problems, but uh, yeah, it is it is still painful. Um, but it, it's a learning experience, like you said, something to get over. Uh, the the basic situation is that there's a side chain um, called Smart PCH that was created, uh, you know, uh, with the intent to uh, enhance uh, BCH main chain by having a side chain that does uh, something interesting. And that interesting thing is that it's a uh, uh, an EVM. So it can do all the things that Ethereum can do, basically. And uh, and then uh, there, there was a little bit too much trust placed in a uh, custodial setup for the bridge to get to it. And uh, that has uh, turned into the, the fire that that Cheap Lightning was talking about. So yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty painful for some people. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of people who haven't been touched at all by it, right? The people who are actually using uh, Bitcoin Cash main chain who are using it, uh, you know, as money, as, as we always discuss, uh, merchants, uh, users as investment, as remittances, et cetera, uh, those users haven't been affected at all um, because this only affects the, uh, the side chain. So, yeah, there's a lot of pain, but something to get over, like you said, Dijan. Yeah, I mean, I look, when you when you try to move mountains, you know, the problem is a cure. Um, <laughs> so, like, like, like I said, you know, it's it's difficult. I mean, also the regulations are are you know getting stricter and stricter in in each of the countries we try to develop. But but 
nevertheless, I mean, only through Go Crypto you can pay on you know ten thousands of locations around the world for anything you want. Um, basically, I was just in Prague a few days ago, and I went to this public uh, tram. It's the oldest tram in Prague, and I paid the car, the ticket with BCH. Oh yeah. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me, you know? It's 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 working, you know? And 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 if you if you walk around Europe, uh, you have enough locations basically to to spend or to buy whatever you need and be totally um, cash agnostic. So I it's, it's uh, I mean, I, I think this adoption is happening, and I, and I know that it, a lot of things are going on in Antigua, uh, and and uh, a lot of things are going on in St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, I know we're moving mountains in Japan, uh, but, but I'm sure that in the upcoming years, this adoption will be higher and higher because the problems... In the econ in, in the whole economy will be bigger and bigger, connected to the inflation rates and and you know trust towards the local currencies. So I think we should just keep on you know focusing on the primary thing that BCH is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that anyone can have and anyone can buy and spend, uh, and and it's instant. And, and even if the merchants are afraid of the volatility, we offer them an option that they can avoid that volatility risk. But I also see many merchants just accepting BCH and then spending it further on. Um, and and I, I would rather not, you know, spend too much time on, on this whole problems with CoinFlex and everything because it's becoming a disease that we need to overtake. And it's just a problem that it somehow will have to be um, solved. Um, but, but the whole currency, the whole chain, the whole community, people and developers around it, you know, we're all motivated by, by this basic idea uh, that, there is a currency you can spend in it and it works instantly, uh, like Roger is always saying. But look, guys, you know, obstacles and, and fails will always happen. It's part of the, the process. Hey, Dijan, I, I wanted to ask you something on, on that. Uh, you know, what you were saying about uh, people are having more and more problems, uh, currencies and economies are having more problems related to, uh, right, related to currencies themselves. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that now, in this age that we're in right now, like it's one of the first times in my whole lifetime that I've seen people start to be aware of, you know, a larger number of people start to be aware of, of money and, you know, currency and, and those things, right? Like the last time it was like that was probably in the United States in probably the 70s or 80s that people had any awareness of, uh, of currency. But at that time, there was absolutely nothing they could do about it, right? There was nothing at all. Um, today, there is actually something they can do about it. But uh, the question I wanted to ask you is about uh, the, the countries that you're working in. Are you working in any of the countries where they're cracking down on paper cash, you know, on, on larger denominations or just generally trying to move people away from uh, cash and into some kind of digital debit type system? I mean, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a great question. But keep one thing in mind that the countries that are moving away from cash are issuing digital cash. And this digital cash is centralized. It's uh, even yeah. more difficult to control it when it comes to issuing it. So if they issue a digital currency that it's not on blockchain, they just made it. They just make it even simpler to print it and 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 mint it and mm -hmm. and just put it into the into the you know towards the people. But they, they will control it. us more. Yeah. yeah. Well, they they yeah. will know more about how we spend money and how much we have it. But on the other side they just made their life easier because they can simply just with few clicks print and more and, you know, create it more. So not issuing it, you know, just like this, like, like some other countries are now trying to do it. I think it's, it's this Nordic countries. They're trying to go cashless in. And I know the China of course is going cashless as well. You know, it, it doesn't mean it's going to be better for the people, of but it's not, uh, yeah. in, in big case, it's just going to be better for the government's, and better for the currency as itself in matter of no, but they will be able to control the inflation rate or not control it even more right. uh, straightforward. If somebody puts it on blockchain, well, that's a different story because then it's trackable and you can actually see how much of this money is being generated. And if, if there will be a country who will put a, let's say, um, I don't know, there is only 21 million <laughs> of, of, of this currency um, then, then, then that will be a game changer. But I'm not. I'm afraid that the countries are not mm, capable of doing that, or afraid of doing that. 
especially when they need money, it's difficult for them not to have this instrument of creating new money and yeah, creating debt or whatsoever. Actually, just, I mean, it's, it's very difficult. I'm, I'm looking into, into, you know, countries like El Salvador that it's now on Bitcoin, but eventually they will figure out that they need to open the system for the other currencies as well because it's simply, I'm, I'm so happy for these guys. You know, they made a move forward, but on the merchant side, it's extremely difficult because it works and it's not working. It's, it's volatile. The, the system is not like, you know, it's not seamless as it should be with the card payments or like we're doing it on the BCH side. You know, when you pay with, with a BCH or with Bitcoin.com wallet or any of our, on any of our locations, it's simple. It's like a grandma can do it. If you want to do it in El Salvador, you need to have knowledge how to do it. Um, so I, I, I will just try everything possible to, you know, to help the community and, and bring BCH towards the mainstream. But, yeah, I mean, it would be great if there would be a country issuing their currency on blockchain and that everybody can, be, can track it. Mm. Even yeah. if it's an unlimited supply. Doesn't or, matter. Or if- or, or if it's some small country that really wants to, to be experimental, just drop the whole currency idea. Let let somebody else take care of that. That, that would be a, would be a radical amazing. move. <laughs> I mean, some That'd do that effectively in some cases, right? Like the, their official currency is the, the U.S. dollar, and uh, they are tied to that boat. So um, if that boat starts to sink, you know, in terms of uh, uh, purchasing power and in terms of, of influence, and high stability, then, then, you know, they, they might have other things to do. Hyperinflation, yeah. Well, if USC gets into hyperinflation, uh, we're in for a real wild ride. So, I think the, the inflation rate right now in the U.S. is more than 9%, I think. I'm not sure. But I think it's around 9%. And I think that's huge also in Europe. Like, you know, uh, yeah. nobody really knows what's the real number, but it's... It's it's coming there. Like everything is so expensive, guys. Everything. And, and, and people and, are actually and, aware of it, right? I mean, the, the the narrative is people are trying to move the narrative, right? Like, oh, it's because of this or that or the other thing. But they, they never talk. The thing that they never do talk about is is pretty damning, right? Like they never talk about the actual inflation of the money supply as as one of the yeah, factors well, at the very least, right? So they're talking yeah. about it now because the salary is the same, but everything is more expensive. Yeah, right. So people you are get, actually aware yeah. of things now. The, so that, yeah. that's fantastic. And not only aware of the, the fact that, you know, money is an important thing to be done well. Um, there's, there's raising awareness of that and, of that. and there's also raising awareness of privacy issues, right? Like uh, several things have led to the point where unless you just completely have your head in the sand, you know that your government is, is at least trying to watch what you do and trying to record how you spend your money and what you do with your money and who you send your money to and where you keep your money and all of those things, right? Like just the, the surveillance is increasing more and more and more. So people actually have an awareness of that. And, you know, 10, 10 years ago, if you ask somebody about privacy and money, they would just be like, what are you talking about? But both of those are, are key issues today. So but 10 uh, years yeah, ago, the timing is right. <laughs> exactly. 10 years ago, and, you could walk into a bank and take out $10,000 and, and uh, there would be no issue with it. They'd be like, oh, you want your money? Sure, no problem. But now uh, most most banks will not give you your own money if it's over a certain number, right? Uh, which yeah. is and, just and we're getting to the point. We're getting to the point where you start to wonder, like, wait, are, is it because you're suspicious of me, or is it because you don't have any? Have any? <laughs> <laughs> like, which one is it? <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if, if BCH if BCH would be a stable coin, it would probably be one of the top three coins in the world because it's the the only thing that people are afraid right now when it comes to BCH is the volatility. And it's normal, you know. But, uh, but in matter of the name and the usability, it's very straightforward. It works, sounds, you know. It makes sense. I'm just sounds saying. Like yeah. Somebody should uh, be working on a stability solution. I wonder if there's anybody in the chat here today that could comment a little <laughs> bit about uh, some kind of stability solution. <laughs> Uh, you name has designed one which uh, General Protocol is, is, is building, right? Uh, 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 but, but, um, no, but this is an actual strategic issue, right? Because uh, there's issues that everybody now sees uh, with the idea of stable coins in particular, right? Like they were kind of invincible and bulletproof until recently. People were like, oh, it's going to work. No problem. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's all right. But then it's like, oh, wait. Yeah, it actually turned out that the vast majority of stable coins were full on uh, pyramids, Ponzi's, uh, unbacked, 
fractional reserve, like all of the things that the traditional finance, um, like all of the, the, the vices of traditional finance, right, were right there in, in stable coins. So not all of them, uh, I think, I hope, but uh, a lot of them. So they, they've lost a little bit of their shine. So um, the, the, the design that you name, uh, I'm, you name here came up with uh, long before any of these stable coins issues uh, became reality, you know, he identified those and said, you know, we need a different type of solution. So, so yeah. It, it, so it is important. It is important to know that the uh, the problem of uh, stable coins failing is not a new one, and it is not unique to crypto. So long before you know Bitcoin existed, countries, entire countries, have packed their have packed their currencies to each other, and most notably to the uh, U.S. dollar and packs those packs always end up failing so it is not a new problem it is a problem that has exists existed basically since the beginning of having multiple currencies in the world and so the so you know a lot of people are saying that oh uh, there there is going to be the next stable coin uh, we will invent a better algorithm that solves this we would uh, invent some better form of, of custody no 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 that is that is going that is going to last until it does not last uh, just like you know all the uh, all the past failures of the past 100 or 200 years um, we are not going to magically solve that uh, in terms of stablecoins. So I think, you know, people who are advocating for, oh, just some slightly better stablecoin should be aware of that. And instead, uh, I, I mean, at least this is what I personally think, uh, is that uh, instead of that, for whatever st um, stability solutions that uh, we're coming up with, like, you know, the any hedge, the any hedge solution, which I, uh, which you know, uh, some might think, oh, it has been shielded before in those channels, but we will shield it again. Um, what we can do is uh, that instead of issuing a stablecoin that hides everything uh, behind a something something USD and uh, label and then pretending that it is just as good as USD, uh, what we can do is uh, to uh, silo all to silo individual uh, attempts to stabilize your coins just like people have done for even longer in the futures markets and options markets um, and expose the risk um, so that it is transparent and the cost of stabilizing your coins transparently. I think that is the way to go and uh, it would involve a lot less grief down the line and be a lot, a lot harder to kill. Um, so yeah, uh, that is uh, the original, that is uh, a lot of the intention behind the uh, behind the any hedge concept that we came up with uh, and uh, the challenge of course is how to make it user friendly and how to get sufficient liquidity for it and uh, things like that that uh, emerging reasons is uh, uh, very aware of yeah. for people who perhaps don't know uh, what you're working on could you explain very basically what it is you're working on and how it would work and, and of course what advantages uh, it would give BCH versus uh, other coins out there. Ah, so uh, the NEH solution is, uh, to put it in very simple terms, uh, the a mechanism a mechanism through uh, on-chain smart contracts on the main chain to marry two parties, uh, one side of which want less risk, they want to hedge, basically, uh, and uh, they want stability against another party who wants more risk. Uh, the you know uh, what we colloquially call the long party uh, wants more uh, more risk. Uh, they want to bet on BCH, and uh, you know if BCH rises in price, they want to they want to profit from it. Of course, if they if BCH pops in price, then uh, they uh, lose more. Um, so we know from experience and just observation of the general markets that there is no shortage of speculators everywhere and uh, in fact speculator makes speculators make up the vast majority of uh, what crypto is about today uh, this is and this is uh, both an unfortunate fact that, but also an opportunity to be um, to take advantage of so uh, you marry this to uh, parties and on a very high level uh, you can transfer the risk from the par party that uh, seeks stability to the party that uh, wants to speculate uh, in a futures-like 
in the future flight arrangement so that you put in some BCH that is worth a hundred bucks and at the end of the day um, and the, at the end of the day no matter the fluctuation you get one hundred dollars worth of BCH back and uh, the other party takes the profit or losses that is uh, that is the difference between uh, what when you put in and when you get the coin out and that is the basic that is the basic idea yeah and then, of course, to, to be more specific, there's, uh, as Dijan was mentioning, you know, uh, if stability was there with BCH, you know, it could it could be, you know, world leading. Uh, so the idea there is, right, uh, make this facility available to merchants, make it built into their apps, make it built into their uh, wallets, uh, whatever it is, their proof point of sale systems. And so then from their perspective, they can receive BCH directly. It goes into the smart contract and then they're fully confident. There's no question, right, that they're going to get you know, whatever the item was, if it was a hundred dollar item at the end of the contract, they're going to get a hundred dollars out. So th there's no question about that. It's not like a stable coin that looks like it's going to work, but then, oh, whoops, it collapsed and actually you have nothing. Um, right. So it has that benefit over it, but, but the, the user experience is different, but the, the target there on the head side that he talked about is merchants, uh, other people who just want to, you know, they're, they're like, oh, I need, I need to have stability, maybe a business that's running and they need operating expenses. For example, with general protocols, we operate everything in Bitcoin Cash. So we use it all the time. We use it every day. We use it for, for payroll, for payments to services, uh, for contract, for contracting. Uh, but for operating expenses, I mean, we, we might want to hedge it. So instead of having to go to your bank and say like, hey, will you, you, know, will you exchange my, my BCH for Singapore dollars or US dollars or whatever, uh, we just put it into a BCH contract. We never have to leave the BCH chain, but we get that same uh, guarantee of purchasing power stability in whatever it is that we want it in, whether that's U.S. dollars or Chinese one or whatever it is. So it, it sounds to me like, um, you know, an issue that, that's come up, especially with people who uh, run Flipstarter campaigns, for example, is, you know, they run their Flipstarter and they raise a, a billion BCH, and then by the time the campaign is finished, the, the price is fluctuated. Uh, and then either they're not able to uh, deliver on their or flip starter or uh, they've profited wildly. Um, in the case of someone who wants to ensure that uh, they're able to meet the obligations um, uh, and deliver on, on the, the promises they've made in their flip starter, sounds like having that money locked into uh, an any hedge contract would alleviate all of that stress uh, and wonder. Does that sound about right? Uh, you'd probably be able to do that, especially once, uh, I can't say it's definitely happening, but the cash tokens upgrade that's coming is, is huge. Like, I think the world has no idea what's coming. Bitcoin Cash is going to be by far the most advanced UTXO chain when that comes on. But, but it's not 100% everything settled, so I, I'm not saying that it's uh -huh. definitely there. But if that comes online with Bitcoin Cash, yeah, that kind of thing becomes almost trivial. Like all the, the things you can do, pretty much whatever idea you have for development um, as long as you understand how UTXOs work to some degree um, and you don't treat it like Ethereum programming, which is completely different, um, yeah, you can do pretty much whatever it is you want to do. That, that would be one of the things you can do, yes. Um, well, well, I think of it, um, since I, I mentioned Flipstarter, um, obviously you're the person to talk to um, about Flipstarter. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what happened with Flipstarter over the past year? Yeah, uh, so... The you know, vast majority of, of development and everything happened in like a month or two that we just wildly worked on it uh, during uh, some previous fire that was going on, right? Uh, so we created uh, Flipstart at that time. And since then, it's been mostly in uh, kind of maintenance mode. So uh, there's been a few users, uh, a guy called Selling Code. Um, also, Sahid Miller has uh, submitted code for it. And uh, of course, the original contributors, uh, Dagger, has, has made some changes. Uh, uh, Free Trader, the maintainer of Bitcoin Cash Node, uh, made a few small commitments uh, in the past. I don't remember if it was exactly in the last year. Um, also, Quentin Mercier has uh, helped keep the website going and keep that alive. Uh, Sploit has also, the guy named Acid Sploit has helped to keep the website alive um, and, and improve, the, the website has been improving to make it easier for people to get started with a flip starter campaign. So yeah, it's just been doing like most uh, open source projects, you know, just incremental improvements, taking small steps. And um, 
Th does that answer your question? I wanted to get on to, to a related topic, but did that cover your, your question? Uh, well, I was actually more interested as far as like uh, the numbers, uh, you know, uh, have you seen an uptick in, in users or uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, so the uh, dollar amount? While, and, while things thing. were going, uh, uh, while people were still convinced we were in a bull market, um, yeah, things were going and there was like millions of dollars of flip starters uh, going through. Uh, I think the total is up to like five and a half, six million USD now that people have done uh, through these permissionless, totally uh, permissionless and uh, trustless uh, funding campaigns, you know, like uh, uh, GoFundMe or, or uh, what's the thing? Like Kickstarter, right? Um, <laughs> Kickstarter, yes. <laughs> How could you forget? <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah. So uh, it does like those, but it's it's totally permissionless, totally trustless. Um, but yeah, millions of dollars. But once everybody got convinced that we were in a bear market, yeah, they kind of just the interest in, in doing it poof, goes away. Yeah. I, it's probably similar in, in, in other cases. That's just the uh, the way the market goes. And that's not just crypto, right? That's the whole the whole world is uh, uh, feeling uncertain right now. Yep. So, Tighten your belt. Sorry, yeah. what was it? You, you wanted to talk about something else? Um, yes, I, I was going to say, uh, anybody who has used Flipstarter, like it's amazing what it does. And it should be more widely used. Um, I think if people who were worried about, uh, you know, government overreach, uh, uh, surveillance, um, the money supply, all of those kind of things, I think if, if they knew about it, they would use it. But there's this problem that the user experience is, is hard, right? It, it takes some work to use and it takes some knowledge to be able to use it. Like Dijon was saying, things need to be easier. But, uh, but making things easier requires, you know, basically, uh, in one form or another, a company or an organization running a thing that, that does all the dirty work that makes some hard thing easy. And uh, so that's something that hasn't come up yet, but I'm looking forward to that coming up uh, in the near future. I'd really like to see uh, somebody doing it. I would love for general protocols to do it, but uh, we may, we may not, but I think at some point, somebody's going to pick it up and be like, Hey, this is the whole business opportunity to do a global borderless permissionless uh, funding of things and uh, make that available. So, yeah, I think that'll happen eventually, but it hasn't yet. I, I think uh, a huge bonus uh, would be, I guess what I was hinting at before, which would be integrating any hedge into it. So that by the end of your campaign, you're, you know, you're guaranteed the dollar amounts um, yeah. that uh, people want. But obviously I have no idea what I'm talking about because I'm not a developer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of these things, once you get into uh, cash tokens like territory, Yep. Uh, and we have a wallet that's available or a standard that's available. You know, like people say Web3 today because things have kind of developed into a standard where Ethereum or Ethereum clones can reasonably interact with like a website. Like you can get on there as long as you're using MetaMask or some clone of MetaMask. So once we get to the point that we have cash tokens and a similar style of you know Web3 type uh, interface for Bitcoin Cash main chain contracts, um, then you get to the point that you stop having to think of it as, you know, programming Bitcoin or uh, Bitcoin Cash or programming Ethereum, right? Like you get to the point that you're just like, hey, I have an app idea and I want to do this thing. Okay, here's here's the app and here's the library. Do the thing, right? And you get a uh, app developer who can do it. So, yeah, uh, I think we'll get to the point uh, in the coming years that that uh, having an app idea puts you very close to actually being able to implement the app and, and put it in users' hands. I, I look forward to that day. Um, I, I have run a Flipstarter campaign, um, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't do it myself. I had to uh, pay Quan to set it up for me. Yeah. Um, um, moving on, um, in in the last year, of course, uh, we we saw uh, improvements uh, to DCH. So obviously, the I guess it's two years ago now. Uh, DS proofs, uh, double spend proofs. Um, uh, were implemented, and so there's been some real-world use case. Um, and then this last May as well, there was also uh, uh, bigger integers. Um, have you have you seen any uh, real-world use of of um, all of these technologies? And if so, um, where? So uh, I so I can say I can say a bit, little bit about the uh, double spend proof. So for people who don't know, uh, double spend proof is a 
very how should I say it? It is a very non-intrusive way to improve、uh, zero confirmation security because、uh, a very big part of people's worry about zero conf security is that oh, what if、uh, what if、uh, someone just、uh, broadcast two transactions that spans the same coin and one of them pays himself and、uh, if they broadcast at the at the same time, there is a chance that one of, that the one that pays himself is going to、uh, is going to emerge victorious and、uh, he gets the coins and I get nothing, right? So、uh, double spend proof uh, basically uh, ba- basically uh, addresses that problem by making the by making information about multiple Uh, conflicting transactions available to the entire network, as opposed to before, where the Bitcoin, where the Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash network、uh, does not make such, well, does not natively make such information available. And there are some companies, there were some companies that attempt to、uh, set up their own monitoring, but it was、uh, extremely messy and difficult and difficult to do for any.、Uh, For any、uh, merchant who just wanted to do it themselves, so、uh, with double spend proof,、uh, zero conf security is uh, considerably uh, improved. Uh, even in it's not just you know, and it's not just、uh, what people usually like to say, you know, hot dogs and tacos anymore. So,、um, uh, and there are already. Uh, a couple implementations that are in the wild,、uh, so as to say. But you know,、um, while most of、uh, the BCH's、uh, community's attention was、uh, focused on smart BCH,、um, there is a there is a bridge、uh, currently not functional because、uh, the smart B, because the smart BCH issues are still still being sorted out. But it, there is a bridge that has done basically.、Um, That has done、uh, many, many thousands of BCH in volume,、uh, called Hop Dot Cash, that used this concept very successfully. Uh, we uh, moved uh, many thousands of BCH, and uh, basically uh, there was zero fraud, and we lost、uh, absolutely no money despite、uh, offering, despite offering zero confirmation、uh, facilities for even relatively high amounts, up to five BCH. I think we can even push it even a little bit higher.、Uh, Without、uh, running into any trouble, and there was also a third.、Uh, there was also a not really BCH service. This is a multi-coin service, which makes it even more impressive. Called the、uh, local cryptos that also implemented、uh, double spend proof to offer basically instant escrows, and that was really cool. And、uh, we really see, we really want to see it being adopted by even more businesses.、Uh, that is,、uh, you know,、uh, progress is slow but is coming. So yeah. Thank you very much,、um, uh, Vikram. You you asked to speak quite a while ago.、Um, would you like to jump in and and say something? Hi, John.、Uh, Thank you very much for inviting me.、Uh, yes, it's it's a great opportunity to be here on the the fifth anniversary. I would say. So uh, uh, I I know Cheap Lighting said so many names for、uh, today. It was very nice to hear all of them.、Uh, I, I do call this is a Bitcoin christening day in my meetups. I don't know how much is is、uh, okay with you guys. What do you think about it? I'd like to know, of course. But yeah, I had to say that is because、uh, the time when I knew about Bitcoin, this is way long time ago, right? I was to talk about as to tell about Bitcoin as a peer to peer electronic cash in 2010. So when I was talking about Bitcoin as as a peer to peer electronic cash in 2010, for me in 17、uh, when the fork happened, I just couldn't understand why Bitcoin developers didn't want to go for the big block, right? So for me that that. <clears throat> was was not understood, of course,、uh, and eventually I understood that yes, this has got controlled again. So this is really not、uh, a, a peer-to-peer electronic cash. So Bitcoin Cash is what it is doing, and that's why I call that. And、uh, I just wanted to say that、uh, in between. And yes,、uh, my meetup、uh, is soon going to be touching ten thousand, and I'm looking forward to having a, a nice meetup there.、Uh, look forward to all your support on that. And、uh, It's、uh, the ten thousand numbers on the meetup dot com that I have is only from Bangalore, and that's a big number I would say because it's it's back from two thousand thirteen. So these guys who knew about Bitcoin, they all joined us, and now I keep talking about Bitcoin Cash. So a lot of old timers do come, and then、uh, they get enlightened about what really is happening in the space.、Uh, and I'm happy to do that, and I would love to continue to do that. Thank you very much, guys, and、oh, uh, love listening to it. Hey, Vikram, I wanted to ask you how are things going with.、Uh... With cash、uh, in India, right?、Uh, I know that larger denomination bills have been removed from circulation. Is that is that moving ahead, or has that 
has that process stopped or what's going on there no news about that the one time of uh, currency change that happened about few years ago like about 8 yeah. years ago i think that that still stays on and uh, there's nothing new it's been brought out uh, at the time of course they had uh, just like those denominations of 2500 that continues to stay i have not heard about anything new development in that that's coming soon of course there's a lot of speculation from the journalists, journalists and printing a lot of things that may happen but nothing nothing solid has come out interesting okay just a further development of upi and the the kind of bank related payment networks right yeah that that's catching on i think uh, they are exporting the upi model to abroad france is the other country that is trying to use oh. that so the the difference in that upi that i've to when i used to live and work in the uk to now is like we used to have a lot of options to pay but not none of them was instant settlement right like how crypto does so the upi from indian government that does instant settlement so even on a weekend people can like if they had none in their account and they received 10000 on a sunday afternoon they can go and instantly withdraw it to cash so that option of upi is amazing uh, that is there. it's catching on very well like we were talking about cash right so the cash has been reduced and upi is is catching on so it's very close to visa now visa does around 2000 per second i think uh, upi has touched about 1200 per second so it's not far for india to catch visa and then overtake visa for the number of transactions i think the sudden growth in upi has got some glitches uh, the bugs are like uh, once in a while it doesn't go through and it irritates and it, it uh, frustrates both the merchant and uh, the user but that that's very little if you see most of the times in cash that happens because of change because you don't have the right right change to you know convert the cash so this upi issue is very little in that format but yes digital cash is digital uh, use cases of uh, payments is is happening big time uh when we when i have meetups i even use uh, that uh, particular uh, you know context and uh, ex- you know uh, example to use was like how upi works wonders in india uh, bitcoin cash can do the same for the whole world you know you we can become global instantly so yeah then don't have to trust uh your government to uh to be very careful with with its money supply absolutely nothing centralized right. there yeah cool okay thanks thanks for that answer bitcoin appreciate it <laughs> Thank you thank you very much guys I'm happy to hear I'm I'm looking forward to listening to a lot more things that's happening in the bitcoin cash space Thank you very much Um Pleasure. Eleanor I I see you're here as well um long time no see how's it going Oh my god I got totally caught up <laughs> in my lurking <laughs> <laughs> I've been well I've been well I miss all you guys it's nice to hear what's going on and nice to hear about I just tuned in to hear about double spend proof and BCH Bangalore so yeah nice good good to see everyone here How's the uh, how's uh, use of crypto with uh with payments going in in your neighborhood I know you've been doing a lot Well in my neighborhood not so much the local guys so I it's still difficult to get crypto to be adopted here as payments in the Netherlands considering how well the fiat world here <laughs> functions yeah yeah, exactly, um, yeah but i still like i mean you use that service yourself when you send us food during the hackathon yeah, the yeah. tais was tais was also accept crypto for for you know food delivery so that's great and i of course still send bch to all my crypto 101 participants so that's where i would say my efforts are ongoing ongoing trying to onboard people to peer to peer electronic cash And I can't believe it's the fifth anniversary. It's crazy. <laughs> Have it's you been crazy. doing a lot with with Lebanon? I remember you you were doing a bit. No, I, Lebanon, I, helping people there, but I have, I have, but then also horrible stuff happened, and hmm. people in Lebanon that I had taught got scammed by people pretending to be me. Oh, no, no. So that was horrible. Um, but yeah, I still, you know, part of me still is in Lebanon somehow. But no, I haven't done anything more more recently. No, okay. I haven't. All right, it's good to hear from you. But you know, it's interesting how uh, I BCH is still my best medium of exchange, my best, my best crypto to send people to all beginners, to all newbies that come into the space. Um, they always question me. I think it's always kind of a surprise for people in the classes. They're always like, "Why BCH?" And then I I always give our our good story of. of why bch and i show them the transaction fee and i show them in the block explorer how how much it makes sense and yeah that's still so my favorite how have you been busy and uh <laughs> you know as they say the, the bear market is when everybody builds like we were always building 
but uh yeah, yeah we're still busy <laughs> in the <bay> market also <laughs> yeah no when, when you're when you're not totally focused on speculation um you kind of work in different phases to the rest of the of the market well, so it, it's interesting like the, well the bch community was never i feel like your values and the fundamentals and using cryptocurrency as payment was always kind of <laughs> the motto, the the, the yeah. part of the culture as well, right? So I think like anyone who would just talk about price would wouldn't vibe well with this community. I think that's actually the strength of this page is that it's a value first community. We, we may have been a little distracted this last year. Just, just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was a there was a funny quote uh, during the uh, Bitcoin Cash podcast with um, uh, what's his name? Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but uh, Cass PNC and, and uh, Bennett Tomlin, and, and they were talking, you know, they're very famous uh, constructive skeptics, I like to call them. Right? Okay. Yeah, they're skeptics, but they're not toxic. And uh, they, they were having a laugh at Bitcoin Cash. is like the anti-hype community, right? <laughs> it's like, you want to hype Bitcoin Cash? No, no, stop, stop. <laughs> that, that was a unit. name. That was you name. That's funny. Oh, my. That was his, his clue, yeah. Yeah. So what yeah, have I missed? If you were to yeah, like to catch good. me up with BCH, except me <laughs> lurking on a Twitter space, what have I missed? I, I was actually going to bring on uh, some people to talk about some things that they are doing cool. with BCH, right? Because I think that's always, like you said, the, the value and the utility and people using it and not just, you know, betting on number go up or number go down or whatever. So I was actually thinking about doing that and just letting some other people uh, who are nice. actually using it have a have a quick talk about it. Let me see. Um, can... Could one of the the co-hosts add Sakib uh, Noor? He's in the he's in the group. There. Yep, I, I sent him an invite. Um, he he uh, he ignored it for some reason. I don't know. He doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. It's you. It's me. Yeah. Uh, and then also uh, Max. Max. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. he's there too. I wanted to ask him to to talk about some of this stuff. Hey, Saki, uh, can you get a mic check? Could you could you tell us what it is that you did with BCH? Because because I love it and and I think I want more people to know about it. Hey guys, um, just I've never been on Twitter Spaces before. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, perfect. Um, uh, no, nope, can't hear you at all. Shut up. Can we do a quick <laughs> intro? Uh, just Please, real quick of, of who you are, yeah, Saki, sure. and, and then what you did with BCH. Like, how are you using? Yeah, it? so uh, my name's Saki Noor. I'm an orthopedic uh, surgeon slash entrepreneur and. Um, I founded the organization One Dot Surgery, um, which is an organization focused on global surgery, uh, the hope to provide safe, affordable surgical care to everyone in the world. So very non-crypto related. It's a healthcare organization because the vast majority of the world's population, unfortunately, do not have access to safe surgery. And it's pretty devastating. I'm currently working in Cambodia, a pretty impoverished country, and the, the daily disease and suffering I see is pretty uh, pretty heartbreaking. And that's uh, it's everywhere. It's not in Europe and it's not in America. Uh, Asia, Africa, South America, it's pretty bad. Um, but we are also uh, one of the few companies or organizations that uh, primarily use Bitcoin Cash as a as a trading, not a trading, but a, a, a currency. So last year we organized uh, a flip starter, uh, raising 35 BCH. And I just wanted to firstly say thank you so much to the BCH community for supporting that. But um, what was interesting is just last month I did a tax return for a nonprofit organization. And we still don't have a fiat bank account. We don't have a credit card. We don't have a. We primarily transact on on, on Bitcoin Cash. So how uh, how do we work? We pay our team um, throughout the world uh, using Bitcoin Cash. So uh, I I pay someone in Hawaii, India, Tunisia, Nigeria uh, every month uh, to help our team, and they love receiving payments in Bitcoin Cash. Uh, we've given our Bitcoin Cash to healthcare professionals across the world in awards from Syria, Malawi, Zambia, Somaliland in the last year. It's pretty incredible that they receive it and um, and enjoy it. Um, this year, we sponsored a global surgery conference in India when, where young innovators were innovating, not in cryptocurrency, but in engineering and technology. And we get our Bitcoin Cash Awards and introduce them to Bitcoin Cash. And we gave around $2,000 worth of Bitcoin Cash away to entrepreneurs who had never even heard of crypto, let alone Bitcoin Cash. So we're introducing Bitcoin to uh, Bitcoin Cash to, to people in a completely different space. But the most exciting thing that we do, I feel... Um, as, a, as an organization that's completely innovative and primarily needs Bitcoin Cash to succeed, is that we've created this year the first ever community-funded scientific journal, um, peer-reviewed journal. I'm not sure if any of you really understand the complexities of scientific journal publishing, but it's a really challenging industry. It's extremely expensive. Um, people cannot afford to pay for their scientific research to get published in the current industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry controlled by two or three 
uh, organizations that kind of gatekeep how research is published and it's a massive barrier for anybody in the low middle income country settings so we've created the first ever scientific journal it accepts uh, a crowdfunding model based on bitcoin cash accepting microtransactions uh, borderlessly and we basically published the first ever research article peer-reviewed where the peer review gets paid in bitcoin cash the community crowdfund the publication of the um, research using microtransactions from all across the world and basically it's an an innovative brand new way of publishing which has never been done for and it's challenging a multi-billion dollar industry so we're the little guys but we've created something very new that only become cash can use uh with, I, 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 I want to emphasize just for people who are listening who don't probably might not have caught it because i didn't catch it the first time is that the the thing that that sakib has solved here is not only that it's expensive to read research which which he has solved but it's also very expensive to publish research so it's you know publishing and retaining rights to your to your work is basically you're cut out of that if you're anywhere but in the richest institutions in the world or you happen to be independently wealthy or whatever which that's just not a thing um so so yeah it, it solves two huge problems and it also brings together the peer review which you mentioned which is a, a totally non-trivial thing uh, there's a lot of open source repositories of research but um, it's different to have a repository where people just dump research and to have an actual organization that has peer reviewers, has relationships in the industry, has relationships in medicine, and uh, can actually bring people together to do peer review. Very, very, you know, worlds apart, those two things are. So it's very different from something like ArcSave or, or uh, one of the other kind of repositories of, of research papers. Sorry, I just wanted to bring out those details, which... No, you're right. I mean, the, the problem is I could spend two hours really explaining the, the problem. <laughs> Uh, which you know, it's a massive global problem, and it's um, it's huge. And I can, uh, I mean, I can quickly summarize it. But uh, peer review research is the gold standard for scientists, uh, no matter what industry, whether it's healthcare or technology, to share information that is kind of accepted. This is the gold standard uh, way of sharing knowledge uh, within the scientific industry, and it's gatekept by uh, not scientists but uh, publishers, who have two fees. They either charge the author three thousand plus dollars per research article to publish in their journal which means that anybody who doesn't have $3,000 can't publish their work. And so anybody in a low middle income country is already kind of excluded from sharing any scientific knowledge. Or they take the copyright of the scientist and um, they uh, take the copyright and, and sell the work for a subscriber fee. So an, or a reader has to pay approximately $45 just to access that work. And this is well documented. This has been going on for decades. And the research uh, industry is basically held hostage by the publishers. Uh, and the publishers are making a lot of money and the scientists are struggling to share their critical work uh, with each other. And people have been complaining for decades about this. Um, so we've come up with a crowdfunding solution which uh, revolutionizes this concept. Uh, what happens is the author, uh, and also to note that the, publish, uh, the peer reviewers, which is the most important aspect of peer review work, do not get paid. They volunteer their scientific uh, time for the, for the kind of the glory of working in science. And again, the industry, the publishers take the profit from that work. So our, our solution is very, um, very unique, and it relies on a peer-to-peer -peer digital borderless currency to make it work. Uh, the author, as always, does the scientific work, and they publish it. They submit it to our journal. The journal takes that work uh, and pays a peer reviewer a small stipend just to say thank you for your effort uh, to review that work. And the journal then calculates exactly how much it costs for us to publish it, dollar by dollar. Every single dollar is accounted for. And we've reduced the publishing fee from $3,000 that uh, other journals charge to $85. The journal then publishes that $85, uh, publishes, the, uh, publishes the research, but also puts a price tag of $85 onto that. And then it allows anybody to pay for it uh, through micropayments. So if you wanted to pay $5, $1, half a dollar, 10 cent even, uh, we accept 10 cent minimum payment uh, in Bitcoin Cash, you'll be able to access that journal instantly, but you'll also reduce the price tag. So if you pay $5, the price tag will go down to 80. If you pay 10 cent, it will go down to $79.90. And slowly but surely, the price tag gets paid off by the community. And as soon as it hits zero, the journal has recovered its running costs. The article is released completely open access to everybody. And, uh, and, then the, and, the, and the peer reviews have, have made money as well, which they can also donate in Bitcoin Cash to to charity so the whole concept uh, completely changes and undercuts the industry that's profiteering from the scientific work it's completely new but we're we're basically uh, the little guys challenging a multi-billion dollar industry so we've got the concept we've proven the concept the technology works flawlessly the whole system is set up we accept bitcoin cash it works beautifully our big challenge now is really you know challenging the industry to or the scientists to start taking up uh, taking us upon the 
on our journal rather than going to the traditional journals where it has more prestige and you know uh, more history. So that's where we're struggling there. Uh, we've also struggled a little bit this year. I wanted to tr make a small tribute um, to uh, Eliu Nadijo, who was um, our co-founder, and he passed away at the age of 28 in Nigeria. He was the first person I ever paid in Bitcoin Cash, and he died suddenly in January. And that's been a challenge. You know, we, we had our second Flipstart campaign finished at the end of last year, and he died suddenly afterwards. So it was a, it was a pretty big challenge. And also, uh, Chief Lightning mentioned about uh, the volatility of Bitcoin Cash. We crowdfunded at $600 per BCH. And uh, our economy is based on BCH. We kept our funds in BCH, and we pay our staff in BCH. Uh, and obviously, <laughs> we've lost a fair amount of our funds. But that's a learning curve for our company and our organization. But it's been a great year otherwise, and we hope to keep going. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. I hope uh, I hope Eleanor got more than she expected with just that one answer. But uh, I have another one that I want to bring up. Um, uh, wait, but before we do that, did anybody have questions for Sakib? I'm sorry. Uh, I have a question. Where where do you find the energy? You know, I mean, um, I. What I was, I've been reflecting this last month or so, and some of my own personal energies certainly had dropped, and it was sad to reflect that Eliu, my kind of right hand man, was one of my energy providers. So, um, you know, that was a bit of a challenge. Uh, moving to Cambodia this year has been a real struggle because I've always wanted to work in a lone middle income country because I feel like you can't solve the problem from an ivory tower in the West. So, working here um, has been a tough challenge for me and my small family. But, you know, my energy levels are rising again. Um, the journal itself is now. Now that we've sponsored a conference and the conference wants to publish all their abstracts with our journal, so I'm hoping that we'll have a you know a new publication out soon, and hopefully that'll start inspiring more people to think about Bitcoin Cash. Now, energy is fluctuant, but um, you know we've got to keep going. Uh, we've got a bigger, bigger mission ahead, and so we can't stop. Thank you very much, uh, John. You're going to, uh, uh, I assume, uh, move on. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to uh, bring up another. Uh, place that Bitcoin Cash is being used, right? Not just for speculation. So, um, Max, are you there? Can you can you give me a mic check? Okay, John. Thank you and happy anniversary. I don't know if you can hear me out. Yeah, I can hear you. That, that's yep. great. So, Max uh, here uh, did a flip starter um, pre uh, recently, the, earlier this year, or, or, or in the last twelve months, <laughs> this anniversary. And he has been working very, very hard uh, behind the scenes. I've, I've seen a lot of it and talked with him a lot. But um, the use case here is basically investment. And, and maybe uh, in the future, uh, local adoption by the community who is being supported and uh, uh, working with Bitcoin Cash. But Max, could you, could you tell us about your Flipstarter and what you proposed and how it's going? Maybe give everybody an update on how Bitcoin Cash is being used there. Okay, thank you very much. I'm so happy to be to be here this afternoon here. Um, everything is working out as planned. Uh, we have progress, we have challenges, but I'm not focusing much on the challenges because uh, the success is uh, very much bigger than the challenges. So my fifth data has about three major things that I propose to achieve. And um, for some months now being so busy i mean i've been so busy trying to work out uh, the things that i propose in my fifth starter if you can look uh, from my profile picture you will see some of the progress that i'm talking about so uh, what i'm doing here in nigeria is that i am putting up uh, a grassroots uh, work that will support my community and uh, these things that i'm building is being uh, powered 100% from Bitcoin Cash, like providing basic life amenities for the communities. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, help people that are not banked so that they will have access to uh, the things they need in their life, like water, um, food, um, you know, and uh, borderless and permissionless money that they can transact with. Okay, so my fifth that I want to achieve three things to have, provide food for my family. Uh, for the community and for my state, uh, then provide water for the community uh, and they provide uh, maybe uh, something like a uh, mini-mart or supermarket where they can come and purchase those food, something like farmer's market where they can purchase food with uh, Bitcoin cash. 
indeed, it's very hard to convince people to, especially people in the rural area, to cooperate with you to use uh, money, the Bitcoin cash money. But it's working out. For example, uh, uh, currently we are building a Bitcoin cash uh, house, Bitcoin cash hub. Which is one of the um, is one of the what I propose in my flip starter, and um, the the hub is coming up to uh, eighty percent to be finished. So what we attend doing here is uh, to is, it will be a place where we give uh, the community training concerning Bitcoin Cash, how they can use it, installing wallets, you know, uh, in their smartphones, and giving them chance to purchase those things that we are bringing out from our farm with Bitcoin Cash. So what it means is that as we are, we are setting up uh, something like exemplary uh, model that can help other merchants to come in, okay? So if people ask you, if I want to spend this Bitcoin Cash, where can I find a store? How can I purchase food? How can I buy um, other things like water with Bitcoin Cash, then you can invite them to the, uh, the water that you have made available, which uh, is very fantastic and huge. It can serve uh, the whole community. You know, you can see it from my profile picture. If you are following me uh, in my um, Twitter handle, you'll be able to see all these things we are working on. So the farm itself is massive, 100% powered by Bitcoin Cash that will provide food for the community and, uh, you know, make this food very cheap and affordable. You know, anybody that is ready to buy with Bitcoin Cash will be as if he's buying the food, um, um, you know, um, very cheap. You know, but if you are going to buy with um, fiat, it's going to be you know, normal price for you. But if you are going to buy in Bitcoin Cash, we'll slash it so that we'll create awareness and help people to begin to appreciate the power of Bitcoin Cash. Um, this is what we are working on right now. And everything is working as planned. My fifth starter will not take up to a uh, few months now before I'll be able to complete everything I promised. Even though when I talk about the challenges, you guys have talked much about the uh, inflation, you know, the price of Bitcoin cash going down after the flip starter. It's really affected me, but I'm not focusing on that because uh, I've been able to achieve a lot even if I'm not going to achieve 100% based on the drop down on the price of Bitcoin Cash, I believe that I'll be able to achieve uh, a lot. And uh, I will also uh, update the community on everything that's going on around here. Thank you very much. Hey, Max, could you tell us about your uh, the, the BCH water tanker, how, how you use that? I, I love that. I love seeing the pictures of it. And I'm not, I want everybody to see it because I think it's amazing. But uh, it, it's, it's a huge like full size water tanker, like massive water tanker. How many how many liters or gallons is it, Max? Ooh, I'm not sure he could hear me. But anyway, it, it's a massive, you know, okay. full size uh can, oh, okay. there you can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Okay, okay, okay. Concerning the tanker, I believe that the Bitcoin cash tanker that we I introduced here uh, is one in the world. I don't know if we have another Bitcoin Cash tanker anywhere. And uh, this tanker can contain up to um, 9,000 liters of water. Yes. So this tanker is made available and we have a Bitcoin Cash sticker on it, boldly written that uh, Bitcoin Cash is accepted here. So what we do is that we pick water from our water scheme, as you can see from my profile picture, we pick water that are being sponsored by Bitcoin Cash, take it to the city, and uh, make the city to buy with Bitcoin Cash. Uh, is, they are not um, cooperating well now, but some of them, especially the youth, who knows uh, about cryptocurrency, they are beginning to tune in. Some of them are willing to buy with uh, Bitcoin Cash. And once they are uh, they, they are willing to buy with Bitcoin Cash. We slash the price for them so well that they would like to call you again tomorrow. And uh, mm -hmm. as we as we parade our, our water tank around the city, uh, people look at us, you know, <laughs> and they marvel. You see, this is something that is new to them that actually what they are hearing about in the Internet is working out real. They are seeing it working out real, you know, right in their face. People are bold enough to come out and say, okay, 
I'm, I'm ready to buy with uh, cryptocurrency. I'm, I'm ready to buy with Bitcoin Cash. So our water tanker is uh, helping us to, you know, send messages about Bitcoin Cash around our state and in eastern part of Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. I, I'd love to share a picture of that somehow. Maybe I'll find a way to share it with the group. Yeah, so uh, thanks, uh, Max, and also thanks, Sakib, for, for, for sharing a bit about uh, some things that have gone on in the last uh, year uh, during this uh, Bitcoin Cash anniversary, christening, birthday, whatever it is. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I love this about Bitcoin Cash. Um, I, I really do. That that it's it's. I really do think it's unique in the crypto ecosystem that it's the the network that's actually out there making things happen in the real world. Um, not just like I've seen some others that say, yeah, we need to support. Um, you know, this country or support the unbanked or whatever. But when you when you really boil it down and you look at the claims of the people that are doing that in a lot of cases, what they're really saying is buy this crypto is what they're saying. And and I love that we're not doing that, right? Um, we're doing the thing where it's like use this crypto, make use of it. It's going to be useful for you. If it's not, of course, don't use it. <laughs> but uh, we know that it's useful. So help people see how they can actually use it. Very well said. Um, if anyone else has any other comments, um, feel free to chime in now. If not, I have some other things I'd like to discuss. There, there's uh, there's the, uh, I know, I think we asked them to come on. They're not sure. Maybe they, they aren't available in voice. I'm not sure. But, you know, like BCH Games um, has, has also been happening. There's a, uh, Quentin Mercier has also done, in addition to helping Flipstarter, he has done the, only coins, right? Um, the uh, uh, permissionless, borderless version of uh, OnlyFans, right? So there's that. There's a bunch of other uses. I, I don't have a, a long list of them somewhere. Obviously, everybody using it uh, uh, in... Maybe you want to get separately to the subject of uh, MP Bryson and uh, St. Martin and, and the things going on over there. So I'll just leave that for... <laughs> Um, yeah, I was going to move on to uh, what's going on with scaling um, and uh, research. Uh, I invited Josh Green, but I guess he's, he's busy. Um, could you maybe tell us a little bit about what's going on as far as uh, scaling is concerned? I know that uh, there's always a constant debate on uh, Reddit and Telegram. But why don't we just jump to uh, 256 meg bollocks now, and uh, uh, what's what's preventing uh, BCH from uh, from uh, expanding exponentially uh, and uh, what research is being done. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, so just for background, it's, it's pretty much what you said, which is the, the, the plan is to you know, serve the world and uh, make BCH available to everybody at a very affordable price. And doing that is not just something you can wave your hands and it happens. You have to have a, a system that's engineered to, to actually do that, to actually support a massive volume of users. And it doesn't mean that it's going to support uh, every microtransaction out there. No, like that's never the intention for something like this, right? But it does need to make it affordable to the average person. You know, to the high-frequency trader who wants to do 10,000 trades per minute, this, this is not the place for them. That's, that would actually be a side chain. Um, but the main chain is there to be affordable for everybody to use. And to do that, it has to be engineered. It has to scale. And uh, any engineering system, uh, if there's any engineers out there listening, you know that you, you can't just... Uh, open up everything, right? The, the, you have to do things carefully. You have to move carefully. You know that if you if you move one limit, uh, it's abusable. Or if you do this other thing, it can be abused. So this is a money network that has to work. You know, the, the, the target is for billions of people. Uh, you, you can't just play fast and loose with it. Everything has to be done very carefully, very intentionally, and with enough research to, to back it up that this is a safe change to make, uh, regardless of, you know, the rhetoric of, oh, it'll totally work, or no, it'll totally break the system if you do that. We have to go beyond that and actually do research and make sure so we know it's it, going to work. It, it sounds to me like you're saying uh, move fast and break things is not a, a really good <laughs> way about going uh, the world economy. Is that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I don't know. They're, they're, they're breaking things as it is, uh, whether they move fast or not, I don't know. But <laughs> for, for an engineering system, right, there, there's uh, Bitcoin Cash, has many aspects, right? It has economic aspects, it has social aspects, it has political 
right? Like people hope that it wouldn't have political, but it turns out that humans are involved. Therefore, it has political aspects uh, uh, and, and engineering aspects um, and uh, computer science aspects also, which are different from the engineering aspects. So uh, what we're talking about here is a mix of the engineering and computer science aspects. Yeah, and those parts of it, yeah, you definitely don't want to move fast and break things when breaking things might mean that, you know, people who are depending on it for savings or spending or payroll or whatever, if it breaks it for them or they lose their money, that's a absolutely horrible thing to happen, right? That's not acceptable. Um, and, and also the way blockchains work, or at least ones like Bitcoin Cash, as, as we upgrade them, uh, each upgrade is not a trivial thing. You upgrade it and those rules now are rolled out to the whole network, right? Everybody is using those rules. That's consensus. If you get that wrong and you have to start putting out fires, then you end up with uh, historical events like uh, ETC, Ethereum Classic and, and things like that. So, uh, uh, and, and then others uh, in other crypto uh, blockchain history. So yes, you have to be very careful. It's not something you can just, uh, some aspects of it. Right, like applications and economic and growth and experimentation with people using it. That's all like, yeah, go wild. That please do everything you want to imagine and experiment and try and do whatever entrepreneurial thing you want to do. But yeah, the uh, the core consensus, the the heart of, of the technical part of it needs to be careful. And you asked about scaling. So the scaling is that all those things that I said need to be done was initiated. So there's a project that's uh, operated uh, by Bitcoin Cash Node and Software Verde and working together to, uh, this is actually one of the old commitments that Bitcoin Cash Node made in its flip starter a long time ago. Uh, so we're finally getting to that. And uh, Bitcoin Cash Node, uh, and, uh, Bitcoin Verde, and several other people, uh, Matrix, um, I'm sorry, I'm sure I'm forgetting people, but there's a number of people involved who are doing, you know, repeatable research where we're going to publish, and, and it's published already on BitcoinCashResearch.org. Uh, you can look at the available research there. Um, so publishing reproducible systems, you know, this is a system, this is how to reproduce it. These are the metrics that we're testing. This is the limits. This is where things break. This is where things are fine and we have headroom to, to grow. And sorry, I'm gonna keep going here. Another aspect <laughs> of this is that on many blockchains, when you talk about scaling, what they're talking about is the node, the full node or whatever their equivalent is on their network. And that works in networks where the only thing you do is speculate and exchange pretty much because all you really have to do is have your exchange and they have a full node and as long as that works everybody's happy so if you just test your uh your full node and it's able to scale to a bajillion um uh, transactions per second then it's like oh yeah sweet it's awesome it works but uh, bitcoin cash is not right like that right like as we just talked it's uh people need to actually use it and using it means that there's apps there's indexers there's services, there's infrastructure, there's all kinds of things that are going on in the background. Those can't break either. Those have to scale also. And so this research project uh, is starting small, but it's, it's uh, the, the long-term plan is to include all of these things, right? You have to make sure that all of the pieces of your infrastructure scale and then everything works as you, as you decide to increase those engineering limits and make it available to more people. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I believe I did. Um, uh, yeah, you you uh, dove into uh, what uh, BCHN and uh, uh, Bitcoin Verde are, are working on, um, which is uh, I think really important, and I think a lot of people don't understand. Um, I hear people talking all the time about, well, why don't we just move up to uh, unlimited block size, and why don't we move to ten second blocks and stuff? And and I think uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that, uh, well. On the surface, these may sound like uh, excellent ideas uh, before just changing a number in the code. You really need to understand the implications of what it means uh, all across the network uh, because it does ripple out. Um, and uh, if somebody doesn't study what's going to happen, then you're going to break stuff. So uh, uh, maybe maybe 10 second blocks and, and uh, 10 gigabyte blocks uh, is, is the, the way of the future. But uh, without uh, doing research into it, uh, you can't just uh, assume it's going to be okay. Yeah, that, that's a good summary, yes. And, and for anybody out there who, who may be thinking, oh, well, having big blocks is dangerous and you didn't research that or something like that, like, no, 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 no. Like, right, we're, we're, we're more than 10 years past the origin of Bitcoin. Uh, 
uh, you know, the, the, the Genesis block, uh, technology grows. We've always known that uh, bandwidth becomes cheaper, speed becomes cheaper, storage becomes cheaper. Um, so the point of Bitcoin Cash is to scale with what makes sense, because the whole point of it is to be affordable and accessible to everybody in the world and permissionless. And, and those things like you can't remove one of those and be like, oh, well, we're not going to be affordable anymore because then it effectively becomes not permissionless. Right. So, um, yeah, so Bitcoin Cash is all about the sweet spot of doing things just right. You know, not too small, not too big, uh, not too fast, whatever, like being being safe, being careful and, and doing things that will actually lead to, in the end, an engineering reality where Bitcoin Cash can actually serve all these all the people in the world. Um, so just a case in point, uh, you can take a Raspberry Pi, which is a very small like microcomputer, like, you know, fits in your pocket. And you can take one of those today and you can do Bitcoin Cash with its uh, blocks, including the big ones that we have had and, and testing and other cases like that. And it's totally fine uh, because we're careful with these kind of limits. This is a, a little bit off topic, but uh, you know, uh, probably about a year ago, I was thinking, oh, I should get a bigger hard drive. Uh, my my main disk is, is a little bit full, and I was looking at uh, hard disks on Amazon, and I put one in my uh, my uh, my wish list, um, and it was you know 10 terabytes, and I thought, okay, well that's huge. And then this year, I, I uh, was thinking about it again, and I checked Amazon, and sure enough, they have. I thought it was like 14 or 18 terabytes or something. I was like, oh, wow, okay. And then just the other day I read some some news that uh, I think next year they're they're coming out with like 50 terabyte drives or something. Just, just yeah, just unbelievable amounts of storage. Um, and uh, I don't know who whoever would have believed that uh, uh, storage was ever going to plateau. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, not going to happen in our lifetimes, I don't think. Uh, yeah, and, and, yeah, and for people who run cloud centers or, or run systems on, on data centers or whatever, they band, bandwidth has also become massively cheaper, and there's just so much more. I mean, anybody who, think, who worries about bandwidth, like, you just need to take about 10 seconds to think about how much data you are, how bandwidth you are using to watch, you know, 4K TV or even, like, HD TV or whatever it is that you're watching digitally is a ridiculously large amount of data compared to the kind of things that a uh, Bitcoin Cash network does. So, yeah, scaling, uh, the resources are there. We just have to make sure that the engineering is there so that the systems actually work to take advantage of all the, the resources that are there. Thank you. Um, I, I also have, a, you know, one of the main, main things that uh, people often bring up is, is privacy. Um, and I know that some work is being done with with privacy. Obviously, Cash Fusion has been around for a while. Um, do do you know of uh, Cash Fusion um, being accepted um, in other platforms beyond uh, just Electron Cash? And I believe Pocket are the only two things that are using it. Um, do you know anything about uh, what's going on there? Um, um, I I don't. Uh, maybe there are others. I. Maybe I'm a little bit too much on the nerd side, so yeah, I, I use Electron Cash for everything. But I know it's not the uh, the uh, the most noob, uh, new user friendly uh, interface for a wallet, or even having it on desktop, right, is not necessarily uh, a great uh, place for for users. But uh, yeah, uh, there was Pocket and Electron Cash, and I'm sure others have experimented with it. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of that. But yeah, I don't know of any other wallets that have that have implemented it yet. And and for people who don't know, Cash Fusion is a uh, is an amazing protocol that was developed by a guy who has worked on the Bitcoin Cash uh, consensus and then other systems in Bitcoin Cash, and he developed a, a novel way of doing something called coin joins that that works much better than what uh, what people t typically think of as mixers. So it's permissionless, it's trustless. You don't have to share your information. The server doesn't know your information. Uh, and you're able to to, to do these uh, mixes so that uh, you can have some privacy for coins that are important to have privacy on. And the coins that you don't want to have privacy, you know, like uh, Sakib, he was saying how he has a very transparent accounting system and he wants every coin to be perfectly visible. Of course, you wouldn't use something like that, right? So it's nice with Bitcoin Cash, you have a choice whether you can use a privacy or not. And the, there's a huge amount of volume in that. So there's a guy... 
uh, who has done research. It's called Red Team. Uh, his name is Rucknium. He also works with Monero, and he has done research and shown the uh, volume and number of coins and which coins have been put through the mixer and that kind of thing. So it's very interesting. I uh, I dove a little bit into his research. He has a whole website up, so I don't have the link offhand. I forget what it is. It's like uh, anyway, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, the uh, the numbers is actually uh, really amazing. Um, uh, basically, since uh, Cash Fusion has started, um, uh, almost every coin in some way has been mixed at some point. Uh, it's really uh, mind blowing how how uh, widely adopted it is. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, I know repay, uh, recyclable payment addresses, is that what it's called, RPA, uh, is something that's being worked on as well. Um, do you know what the status of that is? Yes, so that's a reusable payment address. Reusable, there you go. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not exactly the same thing, but you can think of it similar to the way Monero works, if anybody knows how Monero works. But basically, you give somebody an address, um, and then they're able to take uh, their own address and your address, and they do some cryptographic magic and they come up with a new address that nobody else knows about and nobody else would be able to calculate except you and the person sending it to you. And so they, they send the money to that address and just with a little bit of uh, uh, calculation by your wallet, it's able to watch transactions and be like, oh, that's mine, right? When it sees it, it'll be like, oh, that's mine. That, that's, that's mine right there. I have access to that. And so, yeah, you're able to give the public, you know, one address, like emergent reasons uh, number 100, like a public address. And even though it's public, every time somebody sends me money, they're going to be sending it to a different address. So it, it looks like my address never actually receives money. It's all going to these ephemeral addresses that are created between me and the person sending to me. And I don't have to tell them anything, right? This is all one way. They can just send it to me. I don't have to, we don't have to communicate about it. Yeah, so, so RPA is, is, is a very cool thing, uh, very good for privacy, but it still needs development. And uh, I think that's just been going slow. I'm not sure about the, the status of the progress on it. I but it has been moving. I, I see discussions about it every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Good to hear. Um, <clears throat> we talked uh, a bit about use cases before. Um, um, one thing that uh, we didn't really get on uh, was the adoption efforts that's going on in St. Kitts, St. Martin. Uh, Sonny is doing an amazing job there. And, uh, of course, MP Bryson. Um, um, he's working very hard um, to get uh, Bitcoin Cash to be adopted as legal tender there. Um, and before some people freak out, being accepted as legal tender is not the same as being forced. Um, so anyone is able to participate um, in the economy using Bitcoin Cash if they so choose to. It's not mandated by the government that they have to. Um, so uh, hopefully um, that uh, will come to a vote at uh, some time this year. Um, and if all goes well, we will see the uh, first uh, country on the map that uh, accepts BCH as legal tender, uh, which would be quite nice. That would be amazing. And, right. and yeah, that is worth mentioning that like he's, they, they've been very aware of it from the beginning, not to make the mistakes of other countries that have done some kind of experiment, right? Where they force people to do something. This one is very much it's just recognition that, hey, you don't have to worry about it. You can use it, and everything's all right. Um, so I love, I love seeing that. I, I wanted to bring up two things. I'm actually going to have to, to, to jump off uh, eventually, but I wanted to bring up uh, <laughs> eventually. Two, two particular things <laughs> Me too. Was, that, that I'm happy about uh, in the last year. Yeah. So one of them was watching the chip process um, continue to kind of solidify. Because the amazing thing about having the chip process, uh, for background, chip process is uh, remove the dictator who exists in pretty much every blockchain. Remove the dictator or the team that controls the, the, the node or whatever. Remove that person. And then how do you make decisions, right? There's miners who make decisions at the end of the day uh, on what consensus is. But uh, we learned that you don't, uh, they don't want to make those decisions, at least not yet. And so... Uh, and also, you don't want to just come up with decisions at the very last minute. So the chip process moves that kind of consensus, uh, search for consensus, the process to find consensus on what's going to happen with changes on the network much earlier in time and make Bitcoin Cash very predictable so that exchanges, users, services 
businesses know what's going to happen like a year in advance. Uh, so that's the, the chip process is replacing the dictator with a process. And so because that process has been solidifying and people are using it and it works, uh, it helps with communication, it helps with coordination. There's no, there's nobody to go to, to, you know, give final approval for things. It's you either met the process or you didn't. And just seeing that solidify is, is very satisfying because it's another unique thing that Bitcoin Cash ecosystem has, right? We've, uh, we've had some pain, we, we dealt with it. And at the end of the day, we came out stronger where we don't have a dictator, we have a process. And the more people that follow it, the more people that understand it, uh, it gets stronger and stronger. So I've been very happy to see that getting stronger where people are coordinating and cooperating instead of fighting over uh, the changes that they believe are important for Bitcoin Cash. And we did a whole video about specifically the uh, the chip process. So if anyone wants to dive in, please check out the Satoshi's Angels YouTube channel. Uh, we did a deep dive into a chip process, which should answer all of your questions. Nice. Yes. And the other one I wanted to say that I really appreciate is uh, Satoshi's Angels. So the the group that is uh, organizing this, uh, you know, they they operate work discussions. They do uh, weekly news. Um, I just I just really appreciate having this really consistent media out there, right? That's consistently putting out news, consistently telling the world what's going on, consistently, um, dare I say, hyping Bitcoin. Sacrilege. <laughs> 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 but uh, but but doing that, I, I love seeing it, and I, I love uh, seeing uh, you know it's not just about speculation. It's not just about oh my god, jump on, we're pumping. It's uh, it's all about people using it. It's about people doing right. something with it, about some kind of utility. So I really appreciate Satoshi's Angels and the the work that you guys do. Thank you very much for the kind words. Um, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think it's super important too, um, which is why I'm happy to be involved in the process. Um, you know, number go up is fantastic, but at the end of the day, uh, I want something a little bit more for the world. Um, and uh, finding those uh, nuggets and uh, shining a light on them is, is uh, I think, something that's really important. Um, we I are... I do think uh, number go up as uh, just in isolation is ridiculous, right? It's almost the definition of a, of a Ponzi, depending on the details of what's going on under the hood. But uh, so that in isolation is... is mm, Pure speculation. If that's your thing, it's fine. Um, but uh, th there has also been a kind of narrative of, uh, you know, the price doesn't matter. And that's just not true at all. Um, the, <laughs> the, the value of, of Bitcoin Cash uh, represents how much it's being used, really, the, the demand for it, right? So if people need it, if they want to be using it, that is organic demand. And that was the original idea of Bitcoin, right? Was that people right. uh, get to mix speculation that, hey, I'm smart and I'm, a, I'm ahead of the curve and I'm going to buy it before other people. That's one aspect of it. But the long-term aspect of it is not that at all. The long-term aspect is that it's going to be used. Um, that is exactly how it sustains its security, is by being used. Um, and so I love to see Bitcoin Cash uh, being used and that grassroots fun foundational demand growing up. So that's a real uh, value floor that... I, I think it's easy to say 99.9% .9 of crypto doesn't have. They don't actually have a non-speculative use case. So I love to see that. And uh, the price is important, but it's important uh, in the frame of it being yeah. used. Yeah. Right. Yep. I, I can't agree more. Uh, everybody's happy to see that their, uh, their their value is higher today than it was yesterday. Uh, nobody can deny that. So. Um, I think I'm almost done going down my list here. Um, I've invited a number of people to speak, um, but uh, people have not accepted the request, so um, uh, too bad for you. <laughs> um, and let's see what else. Um, I think Jonathan, yep. Jonathan Silverblood wanted to get on to talk, but yeah, he's had a throat. His, his throat has oh. been sore, and he said he'd just be on here coughing half the time, so he didn't want to expose us to his, uh, <laughs> his cough. There is a, an unusually large number of people who've gotten sick this last week. Um, it's actually a little bit bizarre. Uh, I'm not joking. Uh, Maybe just uh, like like uh, Bitcoin mining and just statistical uh, <laughs> statistical process, probably. It's so bizarre. Uh, 
you know, I, of course, I invited Roger as well, and uh, he, he said, unfortunately, that he's a little under the weather today, and uh, a couple other people said the same thing. And I'm thinking, is there, like, some kind of, like, ah, no, we don't want to talk to this cat. Uh, let's just <laughs> pretend we're sick. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, everyone out there who's uh, who's uh, feeling under the weather, I hope you feel better soon. Uh, maybe it's just a pressure change or a volcanic ash in the atmosphere or something. I'm not sure. Um, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, special shout out uh, to uh, uh, Jeremy and Jet of uh, Bitcoin Cash Podcast. Um, I love you guys. Um, uh, your your shows are fantastic, um, and I tune in every every time. Um, not always live, but uh, if possible. Um, yeah, that, and that I, podcast is another thing that's <clears throat> blown up this year. That, right? That's awesome. I love listening to it. Really enjoy it. Um, and uh, more recently, uh, Fiendish Crypto has started the DCH Hangout on Twitter Spaces, uh, which is every uh, every, other, every other week, um, and uh, some great guests and great topics there too. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, that's about it for my list. Um, any anything else that happened this last year that uh, you want to mention before we uh, shut it down? Shut it down. <laughs> I, I mean this this Twitter space, not the <laughs> network. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. Uh, really appreciate you guys, uh, Centers of Angels, organizing this, and hope everybody had a good year, and we'll have another good year with Bitcoin Cash. Thank you. Um, yeah, I got a couple messages from people saying that uh, there were some cutouts uh, and silence, etc. It seems uh, once again Twitter spaces is. Uh, having some network issues, um, and again to all the people uh, I sent um, invites to speak to. Um, maybe you never saw. It. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. Anyway, uh, happy BCH to everyone, um, and I'll see you guys again soon. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that bell and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, have a great day, um, and see you during our next discussion. I think uh, Max was also going to say oh. bye to everybody. He's still speaker. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for this anniversary. I hope that we'll have um, something bigger by next year. And most importantly, like John rightly said, that Bitcoin cash is all about doing things right and doing good things even if it's small big it doesn't matter but do it and do it well uh, i lack words to show my appreciation to bitcoin cash community all over the world the amazing work they are doing wherever they are satoshi angels tombox thank you very much and um i want to say something concerning max multi-purpose farm that are being sponsored by you guys you know by bitcoin cash, bitcoin cash community we have a, a way of saying thank you, special thank you. Your names are going to be written on every plant that is available in our farm, coconut, purple. We're going to tag the names of people that are supporting us just to say we love you, we like what you are doing, we want to see this world becoming better day by day. Thank you very much. I love you all. Thank you. Um, I, I love seeing your updates uh, on, on Twitter. Um, and read.cash, uh, it's really inspiring. And I'm also very envious of your farm, um, my uh, my own crops here at home, crops, my plants at home <laughs> <laughs> are not doing nearly as well. So uh, uh, hopefully one day you can teach me to be uh, uh, a bit better at raising. <laughs> raising. Maybe, maybe we, can, we can have some cats in the farm so that we never cheat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good day, good night, wherever you are in the world. Uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye.